Welcome back to the shop today, guys. I would like to start doing some powder coating here in the shop. So that's what we're gonna use this old refrigerator for. So stay tuned while we build a powder coating oven. A lot of you guys are probably like me where a you like to build a lot of your own stuff and two you research the berries out of something until you actually you know find time to build the tools to do said thing you want to do so i've been wanting to do powder coating for a while uh it seems to be a would be a good addition to my shop uh something to do maybe an added source of revenue uh it'll help me out with some of my plasma cut stuff and the list goes on car stuff a whole bunch of stuff but if you guys know anything about powder coating, is that one thing you need is to bake it. So you need an oven. Uh, a lot of people just use toaster ovens or just your generic household ovens. Uh, yes, that works just fine for small stuff. And I always imagine myself doing bigger things like rims and, uh, you know, parts for the car, headers, things like that. I mean, you wouldn't powder coat the headers, but there's some other stuff that you might need an oven for. And we'll get into that later. But... The standard household oven was just not going to be enough for me. So I snagged this freezer up. It's standing upright right now. Usually right, it sits flat. This is the bottom. It's a chest freezer. Supreme type. So you know it's good. Made in Canada. Check the VIN. I've already started dismantling some stuff. Got this guy for free. And that's the best part. A lot of the, a lot of these things, guys are if they're broken, people just want them out of their house. You volunteer to move them, and all of a sudden, boom, you got a freezer. But uh, one of the main reasons I wanted to go this way is for me to build a box. Said box would have been expensive if I had done it all, you know, all new with, you know, new material. So for now, I figured, hey, what's big and square and you know already has a lid? Freezer. Got a nice size in here, and I like these older ones because this, I'll actually prove it to you, uh, is, is, let me find a magnet. There we go. This'll work. Already steel. So I already have my inner too. This insulation, however, is not anything close to high temp, so I'll need to get rid of all that and put new stuff in. But I have my box. Now this trim was all plastic, so I had to get rid of it. So I'll do some flashing on here and I'll have to gut the door. The door's right there. But everything's half built for me, boys. Can't really go wrong. Saved me a ton of time in the fabrication area. And it's got, you know, a decent amount of room. Like this thing is, I don't know, three, I don't know, long arm, three and a half feet, three feet deep and about two and a half wide. Two feet wide, something like that. And I would say about uh, four and a half feet tall-ish. Five, maybe? Nah, I don't know. Big enough for now. But this just saves me a ton of time putting something together. Because the structure's already here. I just got to insulate it and basically put it back together. I'm going to cut out this vinkle here. This is for where the compressor pump was. Over here. Big hole. Now, one disclaimer, guys, is get rid of those properly. Um, I didn't video the way I did it for very obvious reasons because you probably shouldn't be taking those things out the way I did. So please contact a local plumber or your local disposal people. They'll come and either drain it or tell you how to get rid of it. Yada, 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 yada. Please do that smartly. That could cause lung damage, the Freon in there and all that jazz. So be careful. Don't do what I did. And that's why I'm not showing you what I did. So without any further ado, I'm going to continue gutting this guy. Oh, one thing I should add is a lot of people do electric. I'm running out of power to my shop. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of a different type of heat. I'm thinking of going propane, basically for just batch heating. And like, I don't know how much I'm going to be using it. If I was using this full time, maybe electric would be better. But I'm going to go propane. It's a little bit more expensive to start up with, but I think I'm going to save a ton in my electricity bill. So I'm going to start finish stripping this out, get the center piece out, insulation off. And then we'll uh, take a look at it and see what we need to, you know, stiffen up, rebuild, put braces in, how we're going to insulate it and all that jazz. 
So stay tuned with your voice and let's build a powder coating oven. Well, it's been a few days, just enough time for it to get brutally cold and I ran out of propane on my heater. I'm working on getting my uh, furnace going. Don't mind the red neckery going on there, but uh, I'm trying to get some heat in here. So right now it is bloody cold. So where we left off is I was going to gut the thing and I've already done it. Uh, I took out all of the insulation bottom sides. I had this whole inner tub out. There was a little uh, jet out here for where the uh, pump was going or was. I cut that all out because we don't need that where we're going. And I took cut that whole piece out so I'd gain a little extra square footage. Now, what I need to do is lift this tub up because it meshes with these brackets right here and it's about two and a half inches down. So I got creative with the plasma cutter and I made these guys. And I actually used the My, uh, my CAD system that comes with the MyPlasm software. Uh, if you want my review or thoughts on the MyPlasm, I'll leave a link in a video up here somewhere of uh, when I switched that over. Really love that system. But I was able to design this right there on the computer, cut it, took me 10 minutes. So these are all bend lines. I'm going to bend them. And so I'm basically going to have a little bit of a steel stud. These two studs are going to go kind of bang, bang, just to lift it off. And so I have something to screw to. And I'm also going to do uh, one for sure on the bottom, maybe one on top. We'll see. The, those, the bottom and the back is what more is more important, just to keep it off. And once I have those studs in, in on mounted, uh, I am going to take this back out and uh, we're going to wrap this in some insulation. I need to pick up the insulation yet, haven't gotten that far. And then once the insulation is in, then I'm going to mount the door, make sure that all works. May I'm going to have to make some flashing to cover this. This was plastic. We're going to make that out of steel. I think I have some tin somewhere. It won't be pretty, but we're going to send it anyway. And yeah, we're making some good progress. I kind of forgot to film some of it because it was I just got carried away. Got my uh, the heater I plan to use right here. It's a Mister Heater. Uh, I don't know, sixty thousand BTU. And the reason I got this one. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than what I would like, but it was in the budget range and it should heat this little box just fine. It's about the same size as I have that one right there. And that one heats the shop, no problem. But the difference between the Mr. Heater one and the one I have heating the shop is the Mr. Heater one has continuous ignition. So what that allows it to do is shut off and turn on via thermostat. So I am going to control said thermostat through a PID or PID controller. Uh, don't ask me what that means. If I find it, I'll put it below here or across the screen to, to let you know what that means. But all that's going to do is read a, a thermocouple or like a little thermometer that's going to be inside the box and tell the ignition on the heater to turn off and turn on. Pretty straightforward, I hope. We're playing with gas here, so... We'll see what happens. If this video never goes out, that's, I blew myself up. So maybe it's a don't try this at home moment. Yeah, this is probably definitely a do not try this at home kind of scenario. I'm probably gonna have to vent this somehow. Um, that'd probably be a smart idea because you know, heat, pressure, bang. So anyways, yeah, I got some parts there. That's all the, to control the thing. I got the heater, but I'm more focused on getting this box insulated and done. And then I got to punch a hole in the back of it for the heater. So I'm going to get these studs bent up and then we are going to see if we can set them where we want them, mount them where we want them. Yeah, should work, right? We'll see. Stay tuned. So what I've done is I got my studs in. They're underneath here. I haven't screwed it down yet because I'm going to wait kind of towards the end and self taper it in. What I did is I made these little brackets out of aluminum. Um, there was brackets like this, but they were actually made out of wood on the original... Uh, uh fridge freezer and so they obviously will not work i got rock wool this stuff doesn't burn so i'm told we'll find out the hard way i got the door all insulated I'm hoping to get away with one bag this stuff was bro bloody expensive so i'm gonna take this tub out now actually i think i'm actually gonna cut my heater hole and my uh thermostat hole first but then i'm gonna pull this guy out lay insulation in here put the tub in and then work on our flashing. Making progress, boys. 
back at it again. Sorry for the noise again. I got some more propane for the heater, so that's trying to heat the shop here. It was minus 35 this morning, minus 30 this morning at Celsius. Uh, it was cold. And so this evening is, I think it was minus 22 when I got in here. So we'll see how warm it gets in here. The shop seems to be holding decent heat, so I think we'll, we'll live. So where we ended off is I have these brackets that I made out of aluminum, supporting the inner tub. We had our studs, that's all mounted. I got a hole right there for the uh, heater, and there's a hole on the other side. He's got to cut away the insulation. Found some of this tin in my scrap pile. We're gonna cut some strips, bend it up to make some trim panels here. I might jam some more insulation in there. Uh, again, this is that rock wool stuff, flame resistant, water resistant, all that sorts of stuff. Should be the best type of stuff I have for it. I got the door insulated already. So I gotta get the flashing on, and I'm gonna put the door on. Uh, then I'm gonna mess around with where I'm gonna be putting the heater and where this thing's actually gonna be in the shop, because that kind of matters uh, when you're dealing with a small space like this. So, once that's all done, then I might punch another hole for a vent because, as we discussed before, a vent is important. So, I don't know where I want to put that yet. Most people would just put it on top, but I feel like all my heat would just escape, so I might put it on the bottom uh, or lower, lower down the side of the, the box. I don't know if that's a smart thing to do or not, but I might do it anyway. They're just trying to relieve some pressure without losing all the heat. That's the plan. And once that's done, we get to mess around with the heater. Just pulled it out of the box and start messing with that. I don't know if I'm going to leave that for another video or not. We'll see how long this one's get. But I'm going to build some flashing and maybe mount the door and I'll bring you back to check her out. And just in case someone calls me out on it, this inner tub is still painted. I was putting it off, cleaning that up for a long time. Tried using some stripper, didn't want to take this off. Uh, and now that I've gone as far as I did, it's going to be a real big pain in the butt to clean that off so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it Don't be mad it's probably not the safest thing I'm gonna see how hot it gets in there and if it affects the paint at all I held a torch up to a part of it, it seemed to take heat pretty good like I had to basically weld on it to just get that so I'm gonna see if it'll take it uh, and if it doesn't well then I'll just get the wire wheel out and I'll try to clean it up the best I can but for now the paint is gonna stay on there and we'll see what it does. Yeah, so I'm just gonna deal with that. So back to the flashing. All right, guys, finished up some stuff. Got the got the door mounted. Just used the same hinges. Had to scavenge some screws, but I got those on. And one thing I need to do is I need to cut these tabs off right here because it keeps the door from opening all the way. I don't know if you can really see that. So I'm gonna get the grinder or something and cut those little tabs off so I can get a little bit more angleage out of the door here's a flashing I made it was pretty cheaply made I mean I made it pretty quick I'm on a little bit of a time crunch to get this done and I need a sheet of metal for this right now I just took a piece of that galvanized stuff just to hold the insulation in for right now I want to cover this up but that'll have to be a next time kind of thing so I am going to add my little hooks I guess I didn't show you those hooks. They're not hooks, they're uh, clamps. Let's say clamps. And they look something like, let me find them. They look something like this. Give me a second here, boys. They're just these guys, little over center, over center latches. Um, I have three of them, four of them maybe, I don't know. And they come with the other other half, so it'll grab it and hold it shut. Don't know if I'll really need that. Uh, I don't know if I'll need three of them. I'm going to do three of them, kind of one, two, three. I'll probably just end up using the middle one because, you know, lazy. I got to cut away a little bit of insulation here. Oh, got a new toy. Picked that up locally. Some guy was selling it. Sweet deal. Very pumped I bought this sandblaster cabinet. But more on that next time. So I gotta cut away some insulation, get our tube in. Like I said, I don't know if that tube is gonna survive. I would like to use something heavier, but it's what I have right now. So I'm gonna get that tube in, get the latches on. There's one hole I need to cut in the back for the, allow me to bolt in my uh, heat sensor, sending unit, thermocouple, whatever you wanna call it. 
And I might cut some tin just to cover that up, but again, not necessary at this point. Might put a handle on it. I don't know. Getting close, and then we can start playing with uh, the Mr. Heater right there to fuel this guy. Like I said, I might save that for another video. We'll see. We'll see how long this one takes. Why don't we get those latches on, get the tube in. That way we can kind of call the shell of it done. So I'll bring you back shortly. All right, guys, I think I'm going to call that good for today. Got my latches on. I just did two because I don't think the three is really necessary. Locks that down. I'll need to put some heat, heat uh, a gasket in here. I bought some stuff that's used on uh, 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 fireplaces and stuff like that, wood stoves. Got my heater sitting here, just kind of mocked up. Have the pipe on there. I have that just kind of crimped on the inside to keep it from moving around. Because like I said, I don't know how long that thing's gonna last. So, but I think I'll end the video here guys because uh, our next episode we'll get to working with the heater and the PID controller and how we're gonna control this thing. And I think that's a video in all of itself. So anyways, thanks for stopping by guys and I'll see you on the next one. See ya.